I first became like really interested in gold uh, when I was trying to make something look like it was made of gold, and it was like making all these versions of it. I felt like everything was failing, um, and then I became really interested in actually the the really large variation of colors that are categorized as gold um, that are um, uh, imitations. So uh, going from that, I started making work like kind of like monochrome or base like very specifically in gold. Um, so I have like, this is sort of like the first time I've had a, an entire show where everything that's in gold, it's always been like a couple pieces or um, a standalone work that was gold. So kind of, yeah. Um, I guess this one here, um, I was really interested in, um, I started, lam I bought a laminator and I was like laminating things and I started. Oh my like, god, you laminated each of them? Yeah, so they're all individually laminated and then I cut, um, cut them out into whatever shape they sort of became. And uh, it was made, you know, whole bunch of them and put them all together with little rings. Um, and I, I really liked the kind of like uh, curtain quality that they were starting to create. Um, I like it became kind of dimensional. My goal was sort of for it to be a backdrop, um, and I was looking a lot at um, like early Renaissance paintings where um, the figure is in color and the, the background is gold, and, and so that's why the, the work is titled Everything, because it's supposed to be sort of like the whole world. Um, and my goal was that like people would take photographs in front of it, which has already happened tonight, so it worked out great. Um, and that it would be then, then like that person would become one of those paintings, right? So they become like the important subject matter with this like brilliant gold background behind them. Um, but I also I mean there's also like I think like a theater quality to it, and you know like having a curtain or a backdrop that's sort of like meant to emphasize the figure um, that's in front of it. So so that's that one. This, um, and like this one and the piece across from it, which is also using uh, imitation gold leaf as well, were sort of scaled. This, I, I made them before I came here, but they were scaled for the space. Um, so they're, they're new works that um, haven't been shown before. But um, that one, it's using the same kind of gold leaf, but um, I bought all these refrigerator magnets from somebody on eBay, and uh, I wanted to create, I guess, like, like a refrigerator sort of functions for people, a place to display something that has um, a suggested sort of like value, but that that value can be uh, fragile. And so um, it's really, I don't know, the air is probably off right now, but when the air kicks on, they all kind of uh, flutter and it creates a sort of like really beautiful movement. Um, but there's that threat that they'll kind of break apart, and um, I'm assuming they probably will, like as the, the exhibition goes on. So it'll be this thing that'll probably. Um, Plant hoping will be kind of a, a time-based thing where it'll slowly deteriorate, um, uh, and like you know the floor will become like littered with with sh like pieces of gold, and um, <laughs> there'll be just sort of these magnets and like fragments stuck on the on the um, wall, and then floors uh, of gold. Of what? Floors of gold. Yeah, you know, or you know, some sort of debris at least, and not the whole floor, but. Um, yeah, there'll be like the detritus underneath that of kind of like that sad, but it's still, they'll still radiate, but it'll be you know, not what it once was. Um, and then this I made when I got here. I had this, these plans to make a, a gold nugget. Um, and I really like that like, the gold nugget casino is here and that they have the world's largest gold nugget on display, is what the, the sign says. Um, but I found an image online that was. At least the source that I found it on said that it was the largest one that had been found, and so it was about I think four feet tall, like an inch and a half thick, and then I think like uh, you know like two feet or so wide. And my goal was to make something like much larger than that, um, kind of beat that one. Um, but the, so the armature is chicken wire. It's a like gift wrapping um, foil and just like scotch tape. You know, it's holding it together. Uh, you know, when you walk around the back, it sort of reveals its flatness and that it's just the surface, um, as just like the tape. Um, or if you come in from the back, it kind of reveals itself to you. Like, it, you see, like, these hints of it around the edge of the wall, but it, uh, 
is I think I already think much larger than you're expecting when you get to the front side. Um, and I, I kind of I, I really like like party supplies and gift wrap and and um, Christmas decorations and these things that kind of like promise they have like a promise of like excitement or a promise of of happiness and I think like specifically like gift wrap um, you know like there's this excitement to open it but there's also like this really big potential for disappointment um, you know it could be like a sweater that you hate um, or like an iPad. You know, and uh, you don't know, and so it has kind of like, you know, everyone's excited about gifts, but then like, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't know what it's gonna be, or like a prize bag, or like, you know, um, and then there's also like an expectation for your reaction. So like, you're opening something and you're supposed to be like super excited about it, and I tend to find that even if I really like, if, like I really really love the gift I've gotten, like my people seem disappointed in how I react. When I open it, I, you know, I don't make like a, a super grand gesture, and so this is kind of like that grand gesture that's it's a little bit um, empty on the inside, I guess. But I don't, yeah, I guess my goal is not to, I'm not trying to um, diminish like interior at all, you know, like I, I don't think that it's like not important how you feel on the inside, but I think um, there is this really heavy importance to the way things like are projecting themselves to the world, and I think that often gets uh, regarded as shallow, and I think that's also like a harsh and possibly unfair um, judgment on something, you know, you know, and it's like, yeah. So, and if something's kind of like a jerk, you know, like, and they're like, oh, but they're like a softie, you know, it's like, well, but they're actually a jerk, you know. Um, so yeah, I guess like with this whole show, I'm really interested in like surface and exteriority and um, the way that color really, and I think my work in general, the way that color plays into that and, and kind of like reinvigorating those ideas of value or um, meaning when I think like surface gives really left out of, or dismisses being meaningless. And I think like that's really relevant to Vegas where everything is surface. Um, but I, I like think the strip is, beautiful and kind of like uh, amazing and it's like miniature reproduction or they're still grand but like uh, like a small reproduction of New York or like um, the Eiffel Tower uh, I think that that's kind of hilarious and fantastic and um, you know when all the lights are on at night it has this like seduction that everyone like is aware of because people come here for it but then they also want to like dismiss at the same time um, so I thought like the gold in my proposal for this show, I, I related the gold to Vegas a lot, and and it, like you know these like reproductions of things and and things being about like surface. Um, so yeah, I mean the light box. So that is um, it's a digital scan of actually the holographic paper that's the background for the window that's in the um, the little alcove area. So it's this paper that's like really, um, it reflects light a lot, it's very like luminous. Um, and it's supposed to be gold, but there's all these other, it's actually like lots of colors. And so I put it um, on my scanner and made a high resolution scan of it. And uh, like the, on a scanner, the light is actually brighter in the center, even though it's supposedly scanning a whole thing evenly, it actually, the concentration in the center is brighter. So all of the colors in that like paper the only ones that showed up were like the reds and yellows, and then the greens were on the edge of the scanner because it's the bright one is bright. Um, but I, I really liked it. I was really thinking about like a, a loss of translation in the way that maybe like a JPEG gets reproduced over, like if you copy a JPEG over and over again, it slowly deteriorates. Or um, the title is actually taken from a photo on Flickr that someone was photographing this landscape and they were talking about how. Uh, they just couldn't capture how beautiful it was in the image. Like it was so beautiful, and like the photograph was not really living up to that. And so I kind of like rephrased what they wrote, but that was sort of like the inspiration for the the title. Um, but yeah, and then I like put it in a light box to try to like re-give it. So I'm trying to like translate it and then like re-breathe as much life into it as it originally had, but it's like always sort of failing. So it's still like you know light is coming at you from the image, but never quite the way it really looks. Um, 
and it uh, reveals sort of all the colors that kind of go into making something in Carol Kids Gold. So, uh, especially with like the monochromes, and I've done some other works with like the show the and like the, the I think the, the display in the window outside um, are supposed to like kind of directly contrast all of these things that are like, classified as gold and how like some will have like a lot of green tones and some will have a lot of pink tones for them and and they have to have that to sort of like be convincing as being gold even though gold is really just like a a, a shiny yellow but I, I don't know I'm not I don't know a lot about color mixing exactly but um like I know like if you're mixing a black you probably don't want it to be black you'll have like it'll be a bluish black or like a brownish black or um and then that's more convincing as black than if you use just black because then it looks like a hole so uh I think like that I was like kind of relating that to the way like gold pigments are made too and you need them to have these other tones or it, it looks too fake maybe or it doesn't look um like gold but then when you compare them together, like especially the one of those monochromes, the the frame looks really green, but it's a gold oil pastel. Um, so yeah, I mean that's sort of my just an insight to some of the works. But if you guys have questions or you want to know about specific things, let me know. Um, was there wait? You had like a list of things. Is there something else I'm supposed to touch on? Or? Um. Maybe it's a little bit about work you've done in the past and kind of lead you to this. Okay. Um, well, I guess this is just like a avenue that I take, but I, I'm really interested in color in general and um, have been reading a lot about color theory and surface. And um, I, I just really like the way that um, color in general is, is sort of... Uh, relegated to surface and that it's supposed to suggest an interiority but also uh, or like a depth but it's uh, usually pretty apparent that depth isn't real and so then you know it gets dismissed I think the way that fake gold does um, but I've been doing a lot of work lately with uh, color and light and sort of um, a way to subdue that without completely taking it away so using things like a um, window screen or um, like tinted plexiglass and having things that are like um, really brightly colored or that light up inside of them or I've been taking a lot of um, landscape photographs of um, what might be considered like generic or like stock photography type images and I'm holding a piece of like tinted plexiglass in front of it and taking a picture so you get kind of this border that's uh, the colors they're supposed to be in and this sort of like toned down version on the inside um because I, I, I relate color a lot to like emotional affect and the way that like neons and bright colors are and like light are um kind of like the extreme positive and that's sort of like how you're expected to be i think you know like um i think a lot of my work is about feeling fine so uh you know, if someone asks you how you're doing and you say you're fine, that's kind of like not an adequate answer and they assume something's wrong. And it's really like, no, I'm fine. Like, nothing's fantastic, perhaps, at the moment, but nothing's like terrible either, you know? And that's like, all right, you know, it's a lot better than, you know, what it could be. So uh, I guess I'm trying to kind of like a lot uh, depict that visually. Um, and so this, I feel like this work actually kind of led to that, where I was working with things that were like a really extreme positive, but kind of um, revealed that that was maybe not a, you know the case as it being categorized as fake, and then it's led more into how can I like subvert that even more and not just have it be a surface, but be a surface that's um, uh, I'm altering your like live view of that. So the kind of like color mixing or the, the changing of it is being done like in your eyes and not um, through like a, a, a selection of color. Like it could make everything sort of like dusty colors, but instead they, um, that's like happening in real time. So you're like experiencing that happening at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah. As far as like work in the past, like a lot of my work used to be really um, like personally narrative and um, the gold work is really what led me away from that and doing things that I thought more functioned as like symbols that weren't uh, necessarily specific to my history or you didn't need to know 
a specific thing about it. Um, and I really started moving towards images that are considered like generic or inauthentic, um, like stock photography and like landscape images and like smiley faces and hearts and things like that that um, people assume are contentless because of their uh, the amount of like their uh, what's the word I'm thinking of the way they're like reproduced so much the um, that they kind of like lose their meaning but then still some people like think you know like a greeting card has like a ton of meaning and it you know and it's like really personal to them but there's like a million of them um, and I think that's really amazing that uh, something can be so uh, prolific I guess and also like still retain a meaning to somebody and I'm uh, interested in the way that they can be simultaneously dismissed too so yes that's how things came to have you been with other colors or is it always been gold um I mean gold is definitely the like only thing I've really done that's like super monochrome or like been like this color is all that I'm going to use for this work or something but um I've been looking a lot more into like fluorescence um and like uh you know like I did a piece recently that was a big plexi between that had like a gold like column like you know like a corinthian column in it that you use for like your yard or to put like a vase on in your house um and then I had like one of those spinning disco ball light things inside of it and like this multicolored um like Christmas garland in it and uh I, I guess I'm looking more towards like mixtures of like uh multiple colors and uh specifically ones that are all really bright or that like um, actually like illuminate and how I can kind of work with those. Um, I also had like a, a black and white photo of a silk rose that I took and then I had these clamp lights on the frame that had a pink and green light bulb in them. So the color like is being added back to this photo that's black and white but in through like light that's shining on it. Um, so yeah, I'm looking more into like pinks and like bright colors and, and things that are not necessarily metallics, but that are um, sort of aligned with, I think, the ways that's similar, that like gold gets aligned. Um, Do you um, subscribe to any notions of kitsch? Oh, I love kitsch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is totally about, I mean, about that also. I think kitsch is, um, well, I have, I have trouble discerning the difference between kitchen and camp, and I, uh, various sources say different things, but um, I think like the quote that I liked the best, and I don't remember where I read it, but it was saying that like, kitsch is like when you're making fun of something, like it's, and kitsch like, kitsch, like reveals, and there was a, this book that I read, um, The Artificial Kingdom, and she talked about like, kitsch being something that fails, like it's trying to be something, and it's pointing directly to its failure and she kept talking about this um like paperweight that had a dead crab in it like this like lucite or whatever like paperweights that have like a scorpion or something and she had one that had a crab and like it's it's pointing directly at its failure to represent something living because it to create it you had to kill the thing that you're trying to and like i think taxidermy functions similarly um but like that was her definition of like kitsch was like something that's like revealing its own failure um, and then I read this thing about camp that was like, camp isn't making fun of it, it's making fun out of it. And I really liked that sentiment, that it's like, because I don't, I don't think that I'm trying to really like, though I think like there's a lot of humor in the work that I make, I'm not, I don't want to be like overly critical of the things that I'm uh, doing, or like using, because um, I genuinely enjoy them. But I also, a lot of the materials I choose to work with come from, my, my decision to work with them comes from at some point I really hated them. And, uh, and I think it's like, as I learned about taste, and I think that's why there's like a lot of craft influence in my work too, is I grew up like making crafts with my mother and uh, I like really, really enjoyed it. And it was like probably what led me to wanting to make things in general. Um, but then there was a point like in art school, I was like, oh, but that's craft. You know, like that's not art, and like there was this sort of like value judgment I was placing on what she was making, and then I, I kind of like started reading a lot of craft theory and like started coming around to being like actually 
there is a lot of value to what she's doing, and it may not have like the same intentions or the same function that what I'm doing is, but I don't think it should be dismissed. And I'd like reappreciate that, I, like reappreciate I think what she's making. And um, so I kind of want the work to function in that way, where maybe my sentiments aren't exactly um, obvious. Like there's a little bit of like making fun of, but also a little bit of like appreciation in that. And so I think that's what, I think like camp, I guess, would be more of what I align myself with is like taking these things that are maybe undervalued and then like reinvigorating like a new fun into them, you know, because they were never meant to be like serious to begin with probably, but um, they've sort of, uh, yeah, been dismissed, I guess, and wanting to like bring a, not, I guess not completely strip away their like origins or their intentions, but kind of like bring a new light to them.